Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with the host, Dr. Brad Palmer. In this episode will be aspergillosis. So what is aspergillosis? It's a, a name given to a wide variety of diseases caused by fungal infections. And aspergillosis can occur in many uh, types of birds and animals. And here's a picture from uh, the C, uh, CDC uh, over in America. And you can tell it's, it looks like a typical fungal uh, infection. And here's a, another picture of um, aspergillosis. And so what happens is aspergillosis um, uh, colonizes uh, the lung and it usually affects people with underlying um, uh, lung disease. And so invasive aspergillosis usually occurs when uh, the fungus invades the body or the bulk of the lung and then disseminates to other organs. Um, it can occur in HIV zero positive individuals, but it's also common in um, people who are HIV negative. Uh, as well, uh, and individuals that are, for example, transplant recipients, or they have a low blood count, or they're using uh, steroids. Now, overall, uh, it is a very common infection, and it is reckoned that up to 600,000 people annually worldwide uh, have actually died uh, of, of, of some form of acid. Uh, aspergillosis. Uh, this figure is heavily disputed um, because a lot of the people that have died from this are obviously in areas where there is not um, good autopsy or hospital uh, diagnosis. And so it is probably uh, much less than that, but it's still quite a, uh, quite a fair number. So how do you catch it? It's everywhere in the environment. I guarantee that near enough every human being on earth has probably inhaled aspergillosis spores every day and without very uh, little or minimal uh, effect, okay, because your immune system is strong enough to bat it off. Um, how does it present? Well, fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing. And those people who have watched my um, last uh, presentation on the COVID 2019 virus infection, uh, which has broken out in China recently, uh, fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing is exactly how that presents. And so there are many, many, many different things uh, that presents with fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing. <coughs> and aspergillosis is no different. And it often presents in a insidious uh, onset. In other words, it comes uh, slowly over time. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so uh, you can also get pleuritic uh, chest pain and also hemoptysis, that's coughing up blood, but that can be uh, quite uh, rare. Now, there is a particular uh, rare uh, syndrome that people with HIV do get, and that's tracheobronchitis due to aspergillosis. And normally you get ulcerative uh, nodular lesions in the airway. Uh, and individuals usually have other things going on there apart from um, HIV um, uh, and normally on uh, steroids as well. Um, and you can also get um, wheezing and uh, strider, but it is uh, quite a nasty uh, infection. So how do you diagnose it? Uh, well, there's uh, a number of uh, micro microbiological and radiological tests you can do, and CT scans are generally um, the ideal choice. So this uh, on your left is a chest x-ray of someone with aspergillosis and noted the uh, top uh, right hand side uh, of the lung. So if you're not uh, from the medical side you'll be looking and it's the top uh, left hand side of the picture okay uh, where the A near is. That's actually the top right hand side uh, of the lung and there's uh, you may not be able to see it but there's if with the eye of faith there's a small round ball uh, and if you look on the picture on the right hand side of your screen um, there is that uh, that same ball it's in the top right hand part of the lung um, and there is um, a cavity effectively uh, due to acid uh, aspergillosis so um, Ideally, you need a biopsy sample, but however you get that biopsy sample um, uh, depends on uh, how easy it is to access the particular lesion of choice. Uh, sometimes if you can't get a, um, a biopsy specimen uh, for histopathology or for culture, some people may go on to do uh, bronchoviolar lavage. Sometimes both things will be done. Um, either way, um, a biological sample for culture it would be uh, ideally um, uh, uh, suitable. Uh, now, the whole point of doing a bronchoscopy uh, is not just because you can just do a bronchoscopy over lavage, it's also to have a look at the um, 
the trick here uh, and the bunkle tree as well and just so if you see any of these pictures uh, you know that someone has um, aspergillosis um, uh, in their uh, trachea and bronchial tree. And if you look at uh, photograph B, which is in the top right hand corner, uh, and you'll see sort of like uh, this uh, growth in the middle of the picture, uh, that's as uh, aspergillosis. Okay, it's, it's a, a fairly uh, nasty uh, fungal infection. Uh, when you take uh, samples, you usually send them away to the lab and they could go off for various uh, stains. Uh, to try and uh, find out, uh, to see if they can picture the actual fungus itself. And obviously you want to ideally grow the sample as well uh, for speciation and sometimes also uh, to check against um, uh, resistances regarding uh, certain antifungal medications, especially if the patient isn't getting or doesn't improve. Uh, there is also a, uh, a blood test called a galactomalin test. That's also a very, very useful test. I've done it a couple of times myself in a few patients. But please be warned that you can get false positives if someone is taking tazacin. Tazacin is a very good antibiotic. Uh, also, uh, it, it's, uh, its trade name, one of its trade names is tazacin. Its generic name is pepicillin uh, tazobactam. So what is the treatment? Well, uh, the ideal first uh, line treatment is voriconazole, and that's administered at six milligrams per kilogram twice a day, and that's a loading dose over 24 hours, and then reduced to four milligrams per kilogram for at least seven days. That's then followed by 200 milligrams twice a day to complete 12 weeks worth of therapy. Um, if that is uh, unobtainable or you're unable to give it for some reason, then liposomal amphotericin B, 3 milligrams per kilogram once a day IV, is the main alternative to voriconosol. But voriconosol really should be the first choice. If there is actually a problem with renal or, or hepatic disease and those can't be used, then caspofungin 70 milligrams loading dose and 50 milligrams once a day IV can also be used. If that can't be used or you need um, a liquid preparation, uh, posoconazole 200 milligrams uh, four times a day or 400 BD is uh, another good alternative. Uh, but ideally, uh, voriconazole uh, should be the first line. So is there any prophylaxis needed for aspergillosis? None at all. Uh, obviously, individuals that have uh, uh, HIV positive and uh, on the low CD4 count will, became, will be on cotrimoxazole. Uh, but to my knowledge, cotrimoxazole isn't uh, very effective against uh, aspergillosis. Uh, in terms of the role of antiretroviral therapy, well, if you have HIV and you have a low CD4 count and then you need uh, your antiretroviral therapy, uh, it's as simple as that. <coughs> uh, no matter how well you can get rid of aspergillosis without highly active antiretroviral therapy, it's only a matter of time before it comes back. How soon do you start antiretroviral therapy? Well, usually in, um, you can start it in a few days' time, but it depends on other results so in terms of um, uh, toxoplasmosis um, and uh, cryptosporidium uh, as well. Uh, oxide cryptococcal um, uh, results coming through as well. Uh, there can be individuals that can have an iris with um, uh, um, uh, with aspergillosis. Uh, iris is immunoreconstitution inflammatory syndrome, and that's where the immune system is building itself out. Uh, and when it builds itself up, it can uh, over. Uh, react badly uh, to whatever pathogens are inside your body. And this can sometimes uh, uh, become very unfortunate. Some people can get uh, necrotizing pulmonary aspergillosis in their lungs. It is uh, quite uh, rare in Israeli case reports, really. Uh, but either way, you do need to start antiretroviral therapy. As we start everyone on antiretroviral therapy now, the incidence of aspergillosis has very much uh, reduced. So here are some of the uh, websites I've used. This is a fairly short uh, today, but I hope you have uh, great sexual health. Uh, do like, subscribe and share. My next episode will be on the COVID 2019 virus to give you an update. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that and uh, see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.